Thank you all for having me here today to speak. My name is Robert Grant. I've been with um, Service Source for six years, Ability One for the past 21 years. Um, I'm going to tell you about the job that I had. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my disability. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. Growing up in Southeast Washington, D.C., my mom, single mom, growing up with my two sisters. Um, father didn't pay child support, neither did he claim around. We struggled to get back. Um, violence, drugs, all that in the neighborhood. School was hard for me, but I knew all my friends was there. So I tried to work hard to keep up with them. So my mama sent me to summer school. Even asked the teacher for extra homework. Um, my mom just knew something wasn't right. And if any of y'all have kids, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, my mom thought I had a hearing problem. So she got me tested repeatedly, repeatedly. Something is wrong with my child. The doctor told my mom there's nothing wrong with my hearing. I had a secret that I was hiding from my friends and my mom, but my mom wasn't stupid. So my secret was that I couldn't read and I was basically illiterate. So uh, my reading level is probably on a kindergarten level. Um, so they had a classroom. It was called special ed. That helped me. But, you know, I have the weekend, so it wasn't really enough. It was just only Monday through Friday. Um, I was determined my hardest to overcome this obstacle thing that I'm going through right now. So my sister said, you know what? Let's play a game. The game is called the pinch game. And for y'all that don't know, you sit in a circle and you read. Every time you mess up, you get pinched in the same spot. And ask me, it really hurts. But you'll know the next time that you read another book, you know not to mess up. So that was helping me. Though so at the age of 15, I had another trial in my life. My mom was like my best friend, but she got remarried. I didn't get along with my stepfather, so I decided not to move with them. So basically, two years of school, I was outside on a basketball court, sitting on a bench with my friends. Even though they had somewhere to go, they still chose to stay outside with me. When their mom go to work, five or six o'clock in the morning, they let me come in and take a shower so I can go to school. When their mom took off and I had nowhere else to go, I watched the sun come up. Once the sun come up twice. The sun really doesn't get that bright once it's sitting in the middle of the, in its space in the air and you can just see it and you just the only person sitting on that bench trying to figure out what you're gonna do for a roof over your head. In spite of all this, I still graduated. I graduated from Eastern Senior High School in 1990 with a special education degree. My test level still wasn't, it still was on a kindergarten level, but it wasn't enough. Spelling on a first grade, math was a fourth grade. I was determined to not just take over my life. 
the uphill battle, when it comes time to getting a job, they don't know how to read, don't know how to count. It was really hard for me coming up. So after school, I needed a job. Um, before I could make any decision, I went to four different church Baptists and talked to four different ministers and asked them to pray for me. It's like they already knew what I came near. You know, I didn't have to say too much. I didn't have to give them a hint about what's going on in my life. They just knew. So my English teacher was the only one in my school that knew I was homeless, but she didn't say nothing. She got me connected to her girlfriend, which was a social worker, was part of the Disability One program. I didn't know anything about it. Didn't want to be with a program, but all I wanted was a job. The first job was McDonald's. Doesn't require much. Clean the bathroom off the floor. Graduated to fixing sandwiches, uh, toasting the bun. Worked there for a year and a half. Then I get a phone call from a company called Melwood. It's another organization just like Service Source. They're part of the Disability One program. And the job was for working in the State Department. First government job. So as a janitory work, worker, I work there. And first I'm trying to figure out how do they know me? How do they get my number? <laughs> you know, you just, you know, you sit home and job just calls you, that's it's one in a million. <laughs> so, I didn't know then, but I know now that I've been blessed. I was connected with Ability One program. Ability One program had changed my life. I took my job seriously. I got a um, security clearance. I'm very proud of it. Worked in the U.S. government, meaning that they trust me. Over the past 20 years, I have been, had the privilege of working in secure buildings in the country. I have worked for the State Department, as I said, the U.S. Mint, NASA's headquarters, the USDA um, Carver Center, and the Secret Service headquarters. When it comes to work, I get 110%. I have done almost a little bit of everything. Janitory, as I said before, building repair, um, building shed and lockers, painting, hanging pictures, driving a street sweeper. I missed that one. <laughs> um, the limousine just came in. Bill Clinton out of the Secret Service building. George Bush getting his people in on the eighth floor. A limousine coming, brand new. <coughs> belongs to the president. I was one of the people that had the ribs of cleaning it around it as, you know, to see the limousine for anybody else. Um, like I said, um, having the clearance mean a whole lot to me, meaning that I am somebody. So now I work for Eternal Revenue Service, Mailroom, in New Carrollton, delivering highly secure mail and packages. My reading have improved a whole lot as I gotten older, thank God. <laughs> um, I've been, I can read perfect, but I still have problem with Italian, Chinese, and Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> but I see a job as an opportunity, for an example. I applied for a lead position in New Carrollton. Didn't know I was going to get it. Interview set up. Okay. Um, one of the supervisors I trained for this,
got the job. She had another job for two weeks and was threatening me in a playful mode. Well, a playful mode is saying that she wanted me to apply for them. I DJ. I can go cut hair. I don't need extra money. Um, I'm sneaking, helping, teaching people how to do their job or learning. So the third time she called me, I said, I'm going to let the phone hang up. I'm going to call, get an application, fill it out. Okay, sent my resume off, faxed that off. Next week, um, that Thursday, I went in for my interview. Who would have thought personnel calls you back the next day, Friday at 3 o'clock, and asked you what you're interested? I thought a couple of days, maybe next, the next following week. I was the first one that got hired for the position at the New Carrollton building. So yes, my work is paying off. Pushing myself is paying off. Learning everything I need to learn is paying off what I do. I give a 100%, 110% of what I do. The customers in the building really trust me in getting their package to them on time. I had to go for training out Virginia, out the Central, the main headquarters, for six months. I didn't last no longer than two months. The people in New Carrollton wanted me back. So one day, um, a couple of years ago, I guess my work paid off. My co-workers had nominated me. This was a surprise. Um, winning awards. You know, employee of the month, employee of the year. I was surprised and stung. I never won nothing in my life. And don't nobody get money away for free. <laughs> So my co-worker said I needed to treat myself to something. So I bought me a 1990 Chevy Tahoe. So now I can put my DJ equipment in without asking somebody to take me here and there. And also I can visit my daughter Diamond. The truck is truly a blessing to me. Uh, my daughter lives in Harrington, Virginia. I send child support every two weeks. My dad didn't pay it, but I'm not him. I love my daughter. Um, service source made it possible for me to keep doing this every two weeks. My daughter's my pride and joy, my love, my heart. Um, before Diamond was even born, I said give and take. Um, about a month before she returned one month, I found out she had a disability problem. Her disability wasn't like mine. Hers was a stomach organ problem, holes. Um, my baby was supposed to die on me. But they fixed the problem. What operation they did was supposed to last three hours, end up lasting eight hours. My baby's still here with me. So sometimes a person that has a disability, it's more like a book. You know you got a good book, a sad book, a book that have a twist. That's how people are. Sometimes we're in a good mood, sometimes we're in a bad mood. Sometimes we just don't want to be bothered. And we like that book. We're rough. Sometimes we're a little raggedy. We might have a good part to it, sad, um, a happy ending. Mine was happy because I got that position I wanted. It wasn't for the money. It was so I could train people. Whatever you weaken, I want to make you strong in. People like Willie, Ability One Program, please remember to employ Excuse me. People with disability. My name is Robert Graham. Thank y'all for having me.